Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, having yourselves a great ending to your day, a great work week out there so far. Got you an update on this uh, severe weather event coming up in the next 48 to 72 hours. We need to figure out uh, what could potentially unfold. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, the exact storm mode. But what we do know is this could be a big time severe weather event for portions of the country. I'm talking about the Midwest, maybe areas of the Mid-South, maybe even areas of the Plains, areas of the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes region, maybe. But we need to figure this out because this is for a widespread area. And I really think there's going to be two areas to watch on the same day. Uh, sort of a, a two-part setup where you're going to have a strongly kinematic driven area to watch and then a higher thermodynamic driven area. And we'll talk about what that means in this video. But if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it, and I appreciate the support. Change the profile picture, uh, so nothing's changing with the uh, YouTube channel. But I wanted to match my uh, profile picture with my Facebook and my Twitter. Uh, so, uh, you know, there it is, face out in the air, there in the open. That was actually uh, the, the sun sets right before... Um, Hurricane Ida came up and hit, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Ida, Hurricane Ian came up and hit the South Carolina coastline where we had some incredible sunsets here in the southeast a couple days before that hit. But anyways, if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So check out Water Vapor Loop. Check out this spin. This could potentially, guys, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. This could potentially be a deadly spin, but that's why we're on here. We're on here to try to keep people aware of what could potentially happen in a couple of days. But I say deadly because this is going to be the spin uh, that uh, provides all the severe weather across this area of the country right here. And that's it. It's going to dig down and then eject across the plains along this upper mid-level trough. And with the surface slow ejecting across uh, the plains, it's going to pull up low-level moisture all the way up to the surface low. A lot of kinematics, a lot of wind energy. And uh, you're going to have an atmosphere that supports severe weather and the potential for an outbreak of severe storms. So let's talk about Thursday, which is, you know, severe weather will be on, probably be on going here uh, 48 hours from right now. But you have two areas. It's already setting the stage for that two area thing that I was telling you about a couple minutes ago. You got a marginal risk down here for severe weather in like North Texas, Oklahoma. You got a marginal risk kind of up here in Nebraska. So this marginal risk is near the surface low that we eject across the plains. This one is uh, going to be lacking what we call forcing due to the fact that it's going to be so far away from the low pressure way up here to the north, but there'll be enough juice of the atmosphere, enough um, thermodynamics, which is your higher dew points, your higher cape levels of storm fuel in response to the higher dew points, to fire up any kind of, well, if any storms do fire up, they could be severe. Okay, so we'll see if this uptrends back, back to a slight risk tomorrow. But the big threat is for Friday, where you have a massive enhanced risk, basically, a level three out of five for day four, which is for Thursday still. But when we make the video tomorrow morning, It'll be considered day three at this point, and we'll see if they'll pretty much drop a massive enhanced risk or if this will be two areas that will be opened up for enhanced risk, which it could be the case. They might tweak that in the coming days. But right now, a 30% chance to see severe, severe weather within 25 miles in any given location anywhere from uh, portions of northwest Illinois, southeast Iowa, all the way down to uh, the Louisiana Arkansas border state border and this expands east all the way uh, you know through Memphis through western Tennessee western Kentucky and all the way back to you know uh, you know I would say like west central uh, Missouri and then even into sm a very small section into northeast Texas and eastern Oklahoma 15% risk. That is a slight risk surrounding this. And I would argue that this area in the eastern region, getting into Indiana, deeper into Kentucky, will probably be more so for Friday night. So if you're not in this orange area, please remember, that does not mean you're not going to see any severe weather. So let's take a look at the GFS. And, you know, we can jump back and forth on the European GFS over the next day. But what we do know is a surface low is coming, and this is going to bring dangerous weather. So let's look at the GFS. We'll start off by Thursday morning. And here it comes, right here, riding the base of this upper trough. It digs out and ejects off the Rockies out of eastern Colorado, give or take an area. And it's already 
around a 989 millibar low pressure around Thursday evening. At this point, I know you just see green on your map, but this could be storms firing up in Oklahoma, North Texas. Low pressure continues to move very slowly, very slowly, and um, until it picks up some speed as it strengthens. But it continues to move very, uh, very slowly, might remain the same strength, might weaken a little bit, strengthen a little bit. But this continues. We get into Friday morning. It strengthens back into a 989 millibar low pressure sitting somewhere in Nebraska, maybe. Maybe it's in Iowa. Maybe it's in uh, South Dakota. Maybe it's in southern Minnesota. The GFS has it right here. There will be already ongoing convection, probably storms somewhere in the Midwest. When I say Midwest, you know, like Iowa, portions of Missouri, um, you know, Illinois. If you don't consider that in the Midwest, I apologize. That, you know, um, there's always, you know, a, a weird, not an argument, but there's always discussion where the Midwest starts. Some people consider Ohio the Midwest, which is, I don't know, just odd to me that Ohio would be considered uh, the Midwest. But but anyways, um, you keep this rolling. We're getting into about midday Friday. Surface slow then begins to deepen. All models show it happening someday, sometime during the day Friday. It deepens all the way to a 981 millibar low pressure off the GFS around early Friday afternoon. At this point, we expect fast motion storms to develop. The, the closer you are to the low pressure, the faster the storms will go. And you're going to have quick moving storms just south, southeast, and east of the low pressure. These will be lacking thermodynamics. But what they will not be lacking is kinematics. The closer you are to the low pressure, the better the kinematics, the wind energy aloft, the spin to the atmosphere. The winds are absolutely ripping and all levels of the atmosphere ahead of you, um, above you, I'm sorry, not ahead of you. And even at the surface, it's very windy. You can tell something's coming. But I can tell you there will be a expansive wind field aloft also to the south where better thermodynamics will be. Um, better juice, better low-level moisture, dew points higher, maybe up into the upper 60s, maybe. Kate values and response will be higher down here. And then there'll be this area in between. We don't know what's going to happen there. Still probably going to be storms. Friday afternoon, this might deepen into a sub-980 millibar low pressure. Remember, the lower this number drops, the stronger the storm system, the more dynamic it comes. And we can't ignore this heavy snow that will be on the cold side of this storm too. And we'll talk a little bit about snow at the very end. But uh, I think sometime Friday evening, this will evolve into a nasty line of storms. Could be stretching from Wisconsin all the way down into the Mid-South somewhere. Blasting through Wisconsin, Illinois, maybe even Chicago, uh, areas of Kentucky. I expect as this works a little bit further east, I think it could be a rocky Friday night for areas in the Midwest and Ohio Valley, even all the way down to the Mid-South. This could take that negative tilt that we talk about where you have a strengthening storm system when they take that negative tilt. But this will be a powerful low pressure. This will be a major storm system. And then you keep this going and, uh, you know, you could have storms overnight in Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way into the southern Appalachian Mountains. And then this continues, and uh, we'll see what happens Saturday. But not expecting Saturday to be a big deal, but that could change. Ingredients. How does this happen? Well, what we do know is Thursday morning, you got a little bit of moisture building. Remember, once you start to get dew points in the upper 50s, low 60s, you really start to feel a little bit of humidity in the air. Once you get into the upper 60s, you really come outside, go outside and say, Wow, um, it's pretty humid outside. I can tell you here in the south, it gets so humid, we get dew points in the 70s. If somehow we can get a day where dew points are in the upper 60s, we're so used to by the time we're into mid to late summer to dew points well into the 70s, that if you get a day in the dew points around 68, which is still pretty humid, you can actually notice a difference. Man, you walk outside, it's like, dang, it feels less humid today, but it's still really humid. But dew points in the 60s is totally supportive for severe weather. Okay, but you keep this going. We're getting into Thursday afternoon. You get a rich moisture field that begins to develop in Texas. Dew points really reaching into the 60s. This continues to climb up into the plains. Gets all the way into the Midwest. And by the time we're waking up Friday morning, you might have dew points in the low 60s as far north as maybe southern Iowa. Certainly into Missouri. It's setting the stage. Remember, when you have such an incredible kinematic field up here near the low pressure, that wind is aloft, 
you don't need high dew points. That big tornado that went through Iowa around March of last year, early March of last year, the dew points, I believe, are only in the 50s. So you can still get strong tornadoes with lacking thermodynamics, which is your dew points. Okay, but you're getting into Friday afternoon. At this point, you have a massive, now moving moist sector, but it is massive. Deep, rich moisture down on the Gulf Coast, but low pressure is way up here, so you're lacking forcing for thunderstorm development. You meet somewhere in the middle where you have a expansive wind field aloft and you have higher dew points. That's where your bad, severe weather can come. Maybe Arkansas, maybe Missouri. And then you have another threat up here, okay, where the kinematics are, are much more substantial. And these dew points, I mean, it'll feel pretty humid in, like, Illinois, getting into Friday afternoon. But, uh... You know, dew points will reach the mid 50s all the way up into Chicago, all the way, you know, into um, Michigan. So massive moist sector that gets going. So the moist air will be there. Next thing you look at in response to those higher dew points is these capes. And I'm just going to look at uh, the most unstable cape. Um, but don't focus too much on this. What we do know is Thursday there will be some juice to the atmosphere. Cape values maybe. 500, 600, 700 joules per kilogram. A little bit of juice to the atmosphere, but there's hardly no level, low level moisture up here by the time we're at Thursday afternoon. By the time we get into Friday, the Cape really builds and will stop at Friday about midday. You got Cape values getting over 1,000 joules per kilogram in Iowa with an incredible kinematic field that I'm about to show you near the surface low right here. Um, you get it into Friday afternoon. And um, any little bit of cape that you get near 1,000 joules per kilogram is going to spell trouble. The kinematics, this is the mid-level jet, which is winds several, several thousand feet up in the atmosphere. This moves through, really starts getting going Friday. But this, you see where the isobars are circled up. That's our low pressure. We're getting into um, Friday afternoon sometime. Look at this mid-level jet coming out the southwest over... Missouri. This is a uh, you know, 100, 110 knot low level jet. That's like 115, 125 miles per hour. Somebody said stop mentioning knots and mention miles per hour. In the weather world, we speak on knots a lot. I believe you multiply knots by like 1.1 something, and that's how you get miles per hour out of knots. But um, in general, very very fast moving motion. Um, well above our heads, okay? So this is an incredible mid-level jet sweeping over the Midwest and then into the Ohio Valley. Then you look at the low-level jet, which is winds about a mile above our heads, give or take a 1,000 feet. And uh, you get this going, and this is that low-level jet that you can see. You can physically see it. When some of these clouds get going, please get in motion for me. Come on, baby. All right, here we go. Um, and you get this going Thursday. You already got... You know, 30, 40 knot low level jet, uh, you know, overhead. And um, as we're getting into, you know, let's take it all the way to, man, this is moving slow. I'll take it all the way to Friday morning. Look at this massive low level jet stretching from Texas to Michigan. Huge wind field. And when you have 50, 60 knot low level jet, this is going to mix the surface. So you're going to have widespread 25, 35 mile per hour winds at the surface where you stand across a huge area. There's going to be a lot of wind advisories and maybe even some high wind warnings out there, even if you don't get severe weather. But as this low level, I'm sorry, as this low pressure gets going, you can tell this is a strong low pressure when you have a low level jet wrapping around the entire low pressure. You can tell that this is going to be a powerful storm when you see that. But what I'm concerned about is you see down here where you got a 60, 70 knot low level jet, you have better thermodynamics down here. You will have storms down here. So watch out where Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas all meet Friday afternoon and Friday evening. But watch into Iowa too, Missouri, Illinois. And then as we're getting into Friday night, huge wind field blasts through the Midwest and the rest of the Ohio Valley. And this could be accompanied by some kind of squall line, potentially, potentially. Okay, so we need to watch out for that for sure. And so... This is going to be a big severe weather event. Is this going to be a bigger damaging wind threat than tornado threat? We're not sure. But what I do know is whatever tornado threat we have, they're going to be fast moving. The storm motion will be quick, meaning 
the storms will be potentially moving at interstate speed. So a lot of people are going to get caught off guard by this, regardless of how much I talk on this, regardless on how much anybody talks on this. So let your neighbors know what's going on in the Midwest, Mid-South, so, we, so we're better prepared. What I can tell you is with this, there could be a snow event with this. Okay, well, look at the blend of all models. It's not very impressive, but a few inches of snow could fall in South Dakota, maybe even northern um, Nebraska, up into Minnesota, certainly northern Wisconsin, and then the UP of Michigan. Could be a swath of snow. The jury's still out. This is going to be a big snow event, but these dynamic systems, these negatively tilted systems, are very hard to figure out with snow, especially late in the season will be a heavy, wet snow. Um, I can tell you also that we're, after this system's done, more than likely we're going to have a 15% risk issued at day six or seven. Because right after this, as we're getting into early next week, another system around this time next week begins to eject across the plains. And with a 984 millibar low pressure, now the GFS is going to pivot back and forth. This look right here screams another severe weather threat across the plains to me. It does. So there's likely going to be another system next week, but we're not going to focus too much on that. But there's likely going to be another powerful system to start off April. And the Storm Prediction Center has already mentioned this, mentioning this. Days 7 and 8, Monday and Tuesday, severe potential could once again increase early next week across parts of uh, the Arklatex into the mid to lower Mississippi and Tennessee Valley. Okay, another upper trough is expected to develop. Not going to read all it, but you get the point, guys. Another severe weather threat coming. I want to mention this briefly, and I'm doing this on the fly. For you folks in the Northeast tomorrow, and I should have already mentioned this, so I do apologize for you folks in the Northeast, but you are going to get a powerful snow squall tomorrow. Wednesday morning, here it comes, and I'm going to talk in detail on this tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for you folks in the Northeast. But there's going to be a cold front, and I would say Wednesday afternoon, this begins to move out of Canada, over Lake Erie and Ontario, blasts through Buffalo, moves through Pennsylvania, New York State. This could be a pretty intense snow squall that might start off as rain and then quickly go to snow. Sweeps across the almost the entire interior northeast. Uh, this could make it all the way to Boston and southern New England overnight tomorrow night. We'll talk more on that. Um in the morning, but didn't want to completely leave that out. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in and listening. I'll be with you all tomorrow morning. God bless.